Hi, this is the sixth episode of the Depression Crisp series where we try to make, um, or we make clothes um, in a simple manner, or at least in an easy manner. Of course, everything we do here can be done more exactly, but um, what I think is important is that uh, you will be able to use your creativity and your fingers and develop something that you think look good, looks good. So, um, yeah, here we go. This uh, is a men's dress stand because what we've done before in the earlier five episodes is to um, drape on a lady's dress stand. And I thought we should um, compare a little bit with the men's dress stand. And I will drape a jacket later on, uh, but that probably will be next episode, depends how, how long it is take. But I think it's important to understand what's underneath a men's jacket. Uh, before you uh, start on the drape thing. Actually, I think the most in interesting part of the tailoring is to build up the body uh, of a men's jacket. And usually you uh, just you know, make a pattern, and not just you make a pattern, but usually you make a pattern and then you build it, uh, you uh, pad it up, if you can say that, with the uh, interlining as, or as uh, we tailors call it, a canvas inside uh, the fabric or inside the jacket. But what I like more is to build the other way around. So you start to build up the body you would like to have. That's interesting. Uh, and uh, then you just uh, drape the fabric over it. And uh, that's... Uh, uh, an old school way to do it actually it would be like going back to the 18th century to build the clothes up that way but that's what I'm all about uh, to use all these classic techniques and try to transform them into something modern what is uh, what is quite difficult uh, though is to show it uh, when you work the other way around on a dress up me because I'm starting closest to the body, and then I work my, my uh, I work out uh, in layers, and then I have to turn it around, of course, to uh, pad stitch it. But I'm going to try to show anyway. So let's see how it goes. So uh, what uh, I start out with, and a lot of people probably start out with, is just uh, padding the shoulder, and. Uh, then you, I usually use uh, simple felt shoulder pad. I don't like the foam ones. Of course, if you want to wash your jacket, which not, which not many people do, is a foam pad would be perfect. But um, the felt ones are more um, flexible and they shape themselves over your own shoulders. So that's a good thing. And actually, they never um, get flattened because it's um, multi-layered felt, so it stays uh, in shape year after year. Uh, the foam ones, they, if you get too much heat on it, they just get flat and they will never fluff up again. So we start out with the, the shoulder pad and uh, then of course it's quite important where you want to place it. When I say important, it's important uh, for your work, but of course you just play around with it a little bit and then you can always change it afterwards. And that's uh, also an important thing with, ta with tailoring, as uh, I would like to stress that the tailoring is, let me get this right, tailoring is that you um, change your work while you're working with it. And that's how you can work with the customer. You start out with something and the customer comes with some input and you come with some input and then you get a product in the end. And that's quite different opposed to ready to made where you actually just try to fit into something somebody who you don't know have made. So comparing tailoring and ready to, ready to wear and it's called uh, is not really an issue. A lot of people do that, but it's quite different. 
one thing is developing and learning from each other and the other thing is just try to fit in in mass product. So you start out with a shoulder pad and uh, you would probably like it to uh, to uh, be a little wider on your own shoulder. Of course that depends also with fashion. Uh, I think I think they're a little bit not so uh, they're not so wide anymore but it depends what region you come from and who your friends are and how old you are of course. I'm a little bit older so I uh, can remember the wider ones from the 80s. So I'd like to go back to that a little bit. I think. Let's see. So you place your shoulder pad and of course you have the, I forgot to show you, and of course you have the uh, pointy part backwards. I know different people do different things, but what would what you would like is to have more padding in the back uh, for your shoulder blades. So you put your shoulder pad up and then what you use for first layer in classic tailoring is something uh, we call, call hair cloth. It differs also what it's called and how heavy it is but it actually looks like that and the woof of the fabric, uh, the horizontal thread is very stiff and the um, warp uh, is soft so it actually collapses that way but not that way so what you would like it to do is to uh, actually shape your pecs uh, or your chest so it looks maybe bigger uh, than what you have um, from nature um, if you already have uh, uh, prominent chest then it this would just um, uh, shape uh, your body so it doesn't uh, so it looks smoother let's say it like that so you want the woof or the stiff thread that classically is uh, horse tails but I don't think that's anymore I think it's plastic nowadays so uh, you want it uh, this way so it stands out like that and when you if you bend yourself over then it just collapses so it's uh, quite um, uh, not yeah quite practical or uh, comfortable that's what I was supposed to say so it's comfortable to wear and you place the um, sandwich where you would like the label to break up. So you just put it up here in the shoulder and um, neck intersection and be sure to maybe have a little bit extra up here. So you place it up here, put a pin and of course you do this usually on the table but I'm trying to do it here. Today. And then you just continue it down to your top button uh, of your jacket. So you, you, if you want it high you have to move it uh, further up here and if you want it low of course you put it further down. And if you want a double breasted uh, jacket you move it over here and so on and so forth. So I try to make it a little bit high so I put it up here and of course you don't want um, this heavy material uh, to be interfering with the button hole. So you have to stop it at the top button. And uh, then you actually just cut it in uh, the shape, I usually say in the shape of your of a man's pecs or if you do a ladies jacket and you want to uh, shape it heavily uh, in an old classic way you uh, put it below uh, the bust area so it smooths out the shape and you would like it to stiffen up uh, or shape up over the shoulder pad too so you be sure that you have enough out here to support 
the shoulder pad that's why it's important that you place it in a good way and then you just cut it down and form it like a chest area in a man or a female if you do that so I just um, cut it up here I always cut a little extra because you can trim it afterwards so you just uh, cut it down here and then you just shape it around like that to uh, to form a bust area, chest area. Probably I will mix up the female and male terms here, but you understand what I mean. So that is the stiffest part of the jacket. And then you would like to fasten it uh, to the shoulder pad, but what you work with is another layer that's a little bit softer and that's usually called hervas or hyomo or other things and actually it's the same thing as this but lighter so you have uh, this uh, fabric that's interwoven with something stiffer in different heaviness if you call it that so you would like it to be more heavy up here and then looser down here just to give the front part a body and you would like it to go all the way down but not continue into the side because then you can't move in the sideways you don't want it to be stiff there so you just have the front part and then you cut it up and continue it up to support the arm side or armhole so I place it up here and now we're going back a little bit to the old uh, not the old but the earlier draping techniques when we draped uh, the jacket the lace jacket you can watch that on I think it's episode 3 hopefully so we just place uh, the edge over here and you don't want too much down here uh, in the front part of the jacket but maybe you want to have a bigger label so you actually have to move it uh, a little bit out just to have enough and you're supposed to have the the, wolf, the stiff thread horizontally again to make the chest prominent and the collapsing uh, side the collapsing collapsing uh, uh, the what is it called the warp and you want the warp uh, downwards so it, you can move around I cut it straight here to support it a lot but some cut it in a diagonal they are not uh, in a tilted manner just to be able to uh, manipulate this a little bit more it's not so stiff then but I would like to have it a little more stiff on my main stand. so I place it somewhere over here have a lot of room here because we're going to use it on the chest uh, shoulder area afterwards I pin it in place and smooth it out over the shoulder and just put a simple pin up here to start with then I have to cut out for the neck and as we did before I just cut out a square be sure you have enough material because you don't want it to be too stretchy when you don't have so much allowance it stretches out and then you can smooth it out around the neck and you just cut it to the neck area and to the shoulder and to the shoulder neck intersection like that and then we pin it 
not to the dress down, but to the layer underneath the hair cloth. So I just pin it and make sure it doesn't pin into the um, dress stand. And I pin it down to the shoulder pad. I want uh, all three layers together and move out the shoulder and pin it into the shoulder pad. And then I smooth it out down here and just get a balance of it. Then we would like to cut this and I cut uh, around the armhole and down here as I told before to support the armhole and down to the edge of the jacket. So uh, let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. And I also have to show you that I have support down here for uh, the shoulder blades. I want to cover the shoulder pad so you don't get a crease or a level that is seen through the wool fabric. So I just cut here according to the shoulder pad. Always have a little extra so it looks like this. And I continue uh, around the armhole. And then I cut about the height of where I want my armhole to be. And then I connect these two. And then I can just shape it up here, put a pin, and then I can cut a little bit further down here in a nice round shape. to the end of the jacket. Here you probably would just cut it uh, straight down to the end and in. Now I made a little roundness around here. Sometimes it happens like that. But if you want a shorter jacket, of course, it would look more like this. Now it's a very short jacket. <laughs> but anyway, you get the picture. And to uh, shape more uh, around the chest area, you would take away the part here, just cut in to the uh, chest area, and I only do it in one layer. And then you put these two together and it would be pad stitched to the layer underneath. I just pin it into place. Two pins more. And you will do the same in the layer underneath, but you would probably do that, or you should do that, in another angle. So what I do here, I just put a pin in the center here, so I can see where my uh, dot went into. Over here, you would like to connect this, or put it more together just to form a better shape at the folding line. So you have that shape and uh, you would like to shape the neckline. Like that. And then you actually have to remove this whole 
area. Just pin it into place. And turn this whole thing around. And then it would look like this instead. And here we put the pin, so we got uh, the end of the dot, and then we just want to cut out an area too. And then I can connect these two to a closed dot. And then you get a really good shape around here. And this shoulder pad, we will stitch together with everything up here. Here you have the front uh, of the label. And here you have the neck point, And here is the back. So this area will be cut out too. So it actually will look... more like a roundness. This whole area would then be pad stitched together. And pad stitching is just you have a basic thread and then you just take a little nip and then you move down and you take a little nip and I don't see if you can see this just move it closer and then it would look like fish bones. You continue downwards and then you just move out horizontally and you continue upwards and the stitches are not supposed to be equal. They're supposed to make a carpet of stitches. And you just continue to do that all over this area. And to finish things off up here, you just put a piece of sewage and you can get that from just the end of uh, cotton material. I usually use lining uh, to have it more flat. But the important thing is that it doesn't stretch. And then you place it over or just beside the edge of the hair cloth. Pin it into place and stretch it a little bit because you're supposed to take in the area that you pinned in before.
And you're supposed to take in one centimeter or something like that. So we continue downwards, stretch it and pin it so you get an ease worked into it. And then you just cross stitch it to the edge with little stitches. A little bit difficult to do it upside down. <laughs> And so forth up here. So you have the shoulder pad, you have the hair cloth, the stiff part, and you have a softer part that continues out to the armhole and down without the side seam and continues to the end of the jacket. In this case, a very short jacket, but things are like happen. And then you have the soft part just continuing out to the label. So if we turn all this back, it looks something like this. You have a good nice shape up to the armhole. And you have a lot of material to work with your label over here. And this part will just be cut away to the front of the jacket because you don't want the interlining to continue into the front seam. And over here the label will be shaped so it continues To the top button. And as you can see, the um, selvage forms the label so it opens up in a very soft and nice way. And of course, it continues up to the felt that is put in the back side to the collar. And the felt is a material something like this, and it doesn't fringe, so it's very useful in the collar and it's stretchy, so you can form it. So this is a part before stretching. And when it's stretched, it can actually look like this. And when you open it, you can see that it's shaped, it's stretched in the bottom part here and in the top part too. And then this will shape the back of the jacket. So it will continue around like this. And this is of course too wide, so I just give it some cuts. And then it can shape around the neck in the height you would like it to have. So if I just pin this in place here, in the back and then you can just continue it down in a nice shape like we did before in episode 4 to shape a nice color together with 
label. It probably look something like this, and then you can just shape it to be more narrow and modern if you think a smaller label will be modern you probably will shape it a little more in a nice way and this is supposed to be probably the same width as the other one so I just cut it so it fits and continue it upwards in a nice angle maybe a little bit inwards and I cut it away in the center back too so it looks like this and in the front it looks like this so this was a very long explanation about something that actually worked into a men's jacket. And of course, if you buy uh, something of the peg, it will not con um, it would not have anything of this inside. It would just be glued together. And if you go out into heavy rain, it just um, smolder. It just uh, disintegrates. And here everything will be sewn into the wool with pad stitches and um, bands so if you use it ever so heavily in a rainstorm go to a bar have a merry christmas with your family <laughs> whatever that you do that stress your jacket and uh, it will keep the shape and if it's a little bit creased you just damp it and then it will get the shape back that's the good thing with the tail men's jacket. So, uh, this was me. Uh, this was what I wanted to present for this episode. And in the next episode, I will actually drape the jacket up to show you some tricks how you could do it. And of course, you shape it in your own way afterwards. Have a nice evening. See you soon. Bye.